All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Form Check Friday. Danny and myself are here. A couple of coaches from Calgary Barbell. Go ahead and head over to calgarybarbell.com and check us out, see what we're about, or check out some of the other videos on this channel. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to get into Form Check Friday, which is the series where we take your viewer submitted videos, we put them up on the screen behind us, and the both of us are going to give you all some technique advice. So, uh, if you're interested in submitting your videos for this, Dylan's going to put a little annotation on the screen right now, somewhere, probably pop up over top of my face, um, and you can click on that. There's a video with all the submission guidelines, all that kind of good stuff. So, uh, let's get stuck in, starting with Johnson from last week. So just a quick recap, at the end of the week we usually leave one lift for our community to help critique in the comments section. And Johnson was that uh, was that candidate last week. So uh, he's 23 years old, he weighs about 155 pounds, he's been working out for about two years. Uh, went from 176 pounds on his fives to 198 pounds on his fives. Um, and that was in about seven weeks. So I think things are going pretty well for John here. Um, but yeah, we're gonna take a look here. I feel like he's touching maybe a little bit high. Touch is a little high? Yeah, I think right. he could be maybe getting a little bit more tuck. So let's mm -hmm. get it. Pulling his shoulders you. down a little bit more. Kind of looks like he's forcing it on a couple of reps. Right, so that touch, probably bring that touch yeah. down a little bit, tuck the elbows in a little bit. Yeah, I think that's gonna be also a product of just getting a little bit more depression. I know we talk about that all the time. Um, you know, you gotta be more depressed. <laughs> if you want to bench good, you gotta be more depressed. It's winter, perfect time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so again, we talked about this last episode actually, you had some cues that you liked when you had to unrack out of a really high rack. Because obviously it looks like John has to unrack pretty much at his full arm's length, right? Yeah, and I was just thinking of like pulling the shoulders towards the glutes or the butt. Yeah, bring your shoulders down towards your butt. So after the unrack, think about pulling the bar down. Think about getting some of that tightness back because you do a pretty good job of creating this nice tight system. The other thing is if you can get somebody back here, that's my, <laughs> that's your handoff person to give you a handoff, uh, then you won't have to kind of pop the shoulders up. But the big thing we're looking for is we're seeing those shoulders pop out as you unrack, which is uh, is losing a lot of tension. And it's kind of unfortunate because you can't can't really unrack the same as I would recommend because the rack isn't you know the right height. So like Danny says, once it comes out, pull the shoulder blades down, try to pull this bar down a little bit. And I think that's gonna get you naturally touching a little bit lower instead of higher. And you'll have a higher touch point too, like his chest will be higher. Right, so it's gonna trim that range of motion a little bit, right? It's not having to go quite as far down. All right, up next we've got Elliot. Now Elliot says, uh, he, he blames his deadlift, or he says about his deadlift, the first thing he said was, I have stubby arms. Uh, so he pulls conventional, uh, he says he feels like he rounds his back a bit more than he would like to, uh, and he says he's a little bit insecure about that. So this is 370 pounds for a set of six, and uh, we'll take a look here. What do you think, Danny, what are you, what are you noticing? Uh, starting with a pretty high hip position okay. to start off, I'm going to say. And then that's not really allowing us to get our shoulders in a good position either. So we're starting fairly rounded. So you think try to get just, the hips down a little bit more? Even just back a little back. bit more. okay. I like that cue. Yeah. Um, I like to, when I'm pulling, I like to hinge my hips back right at the start as I'm lowering myself to the bar and right. really emphasize that before. Okay, so at this point, you're trying to like set your back angle yeah. and, and set some tension in the glutes and hamstrings yeah. before you pull your hips down? Yeah. Nice, okay. Yeah, I mean, that, that exactly is, is uh, kind of how I try to coach people to pull the slack out. What do you think about the rolling start? That, that little bit of like kind of rolling it into position there? I just feel like you really can't be consistent with your start position uh, with the rolling start. I try not to let my athletes do that mm -hmm. unless they're like already pulling 700 or something crazy. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm like, right. I have no right to say anything. <laughs> right. So, I mean, if, if that is the only way you can kind of get into position, um, I think that's, you know, forgivable. And if, if you can be consistent, like I think this roll is pretty minor. We're not seeing a yeah. whole lot of yeah, movement there. But still, I mean, for the sake of, okay, your, your setup and your position is a little bit different rep to rep. And I think if we had that bar still and set up around the bar and pulling slack into the bar and like utilizing the bar as part of the setup, right? So like Danny was saying, when you're here, 
like get the bar into position now yeah. then set your back hip and hamstring tension then pull yourself down and then start your deadlift i'm making football That's plays on here yeah. <laughs> um but yeah so basically i think by leaving the bar stationary and kind of incorporating it into your setup you might be able to help get a bit of a better position um, and like Danny was saying, get those hips back a little bit. Well, and as he rolls it back, his knees start to travel forward to like meet the bar. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if it was just so the bar's in... coming back, he's going forward. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of a lot of moving parts there. All right, and now we have Keegan. So Keegan says he's finding it difficult to find a good sort of hand and arm position. Um, he says he gets some pain in his upper arm uh, and thinks it might be due to his poor position. He didn't really say too, too much else about his squat here. Let me take a look. This is how I want to train. Outdoors in <laughs> yeah. the sun? Yeah. What is the sun? I forget. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Keegan. So let's take a look. Um, I think the first thing I'm noticing here is that you kind of push into the bar out of the bottom, right? So you have this little bit of movement in your upper back and this little bit of a, a shrug and the hand kind of goes into the bar as you initiate your ascent. So it tells me that we're kind of, we're, we're, we're in too tight against the bar, right? Because we're not able to actively kind of pull the bar into our back and get, you know, I like, to, I like to get people kind of thinking about their lats a lot in the squat. So when we have that sort of shrugged up position, we tend to kind of push forward into the bar um, with the upper back instead of pinning those shoulder blades and almost pushing back with the upper back, right? Like, and the pulling. bar kind of rolls forward a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So when we get that sort of loss of position, the bar is going to roll forward. It's going to take your shoulder and your hand with it, and you're going to kind of get cranked upwards like that. So I think more tension, like you're doing almost a behind the neck pull down, a uh, little bit better sort of tension into the lats uh, and through the upper back. I think he's getting depth though. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> depth is there. It's looking good. Um, but yeah, in terms of your upper back and stuff, I think we could just maybe try to tighten things up in general. So when you're unracking, pull that bar into your back, especially as you change direction, don't let yourself push and shrug up into the bar. All right. So next up we have Devin and uh, Devin's doing 275 for a set of four here. Uh, he says he's been lifting about six years, but he's just gotten into powerlifting. What do you think, Danny? Uh, first thing I noticed right away is just like general lack of like upper back stability. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe too narrow of a grip. You can see his he's tucked pretty hard right there. Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe widening that grip up a little bit. Trying to find like his natural touch point after he's retracted and depressed his shoulders. I find we all kind of have one once we pull our shoulders back, you mm -hmm. know? Um, I think that varies a lot based on grip. Yeah, right? absolutely. So as soon as he widens his grip, his touch is gonna change from like way down here to maybe up there a little yeah. bit more. And then, yeah, personally getting feet on the ground. <laughs> I don't know what federation you're in, but uh, I, I feel like you're gonna get a lot more leg drive and be able to anchor yourself into that position a little bit better. Yeah, uh, I don't know if he mentioned that he competes just yet. I think he's just gotten just into powerlifting here. Um, but I, I would agree for most sort of newer trainees, I would say like keep this tightness of like having the feet kind of pulled back, but get your feet out, like I guess this way towards the camera. Uh, to the point where you can get flat on the ground because I think you're going to contribute a lot more stability into your setup uh, if your feet are flat on the ground. The other big thing I'm noticing here is that we're really kind of like, not not that the sink is an inherently bad thing, but let's, uh, let's just kind of mark the chest here because we have a nice consistent uh, camera angle. The camera's not moving. And watch how much his chest yeah. falls throughout, right? So we're definitely not maintaining tightness from rep to rep. Uh, or during reps or at the bottom and then yeah feet are shifting this, butts yeah. going up yeah see the big kind of like butt jump up at the at the bar at the at the end there so i think overall a lot more tightness um and i feel like people think you know like they're going to bring their feet back as much as they possibly can that's going to create this big arch mm -hmm. but then it contributes to the leg drive less so right. if we get the feet on the ground in a position where we can actually create a little bit more tension it'll probably be more stable and he'll be able to get a little bit more out of it as he initiates the press. Yeah, exactly. So you'll be able to contribute a little bit more to your leg drive if you're a little bit more firmly planted. Um, and yeah, I think that 
that leg drive and the foot placement maybe a little bit wider and try to really keep that chest up into the bar. It looks like we're kind of reaching the shoulders forward here. We definitely want the shoulders back and down uh, as opposed to reached forward, right? We got a big long range of motion here. You pull those shoulder blades in, I wouldn't be surprised if it, you know, brings that bar down a good inch just by getting the shoulders into position. Then you bring the chest up another half inch and heck, you're cheating. People make fun of you on the <laughs> internet and discredit your lifts and all kinds of stuff. All right, and now we have Emra. He's doing some deadlifts here. Uh, this is 205 pounds for a triple. And he says he's been lifting for about a year now outside of quarantine. So uh, he says he was up to about two plates before quarantine. He's trying to work his way back up to that. Uh, throughout all of this power lifting, he says he's been gaining a little bit of body weight. Uh, and he said his deadlift actually felt pretty smooth this session, but other times uh, he runs into issues and uh, he feels like his hips uh, get maybe a little bit more sore than they should. He's not sure if hips should get sore from the sumo deadlift. So we'll uh, take a quick look here. What are you thinking, Danny? It does look like he has like a tendency to kind of shrug it at the top. Okay. Maybe. So the lockout? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're seeing like a lot, of, third rep. a lot of extra sort of retraction at the top as he locks out. Yeah. Right, so he's pulling his shoulder blades through quite a bit. Yeah, so there, you just get the right frame here. But that lockout where he's kind of pulling his shoulder blades back really hard. Yeah. Is that something you'd coach him to like try to limit that? I think like for me, what I'm kind of seeing is like maybe not thinking about what his quads and glutes are doing. Mm -hmm. You know, like getting um, the quads to be loaded a bit more, driving out external into external rotation. Okay, so um, like kind of pushing yeah. pushing the floor apart kind of cues. Yes, yeah. yeah. And then feeling the glutes too at the start, making sure that you're pulling the slack and feeling tension in the glutes, feeling tension in the lats. This looks pretty good. Right. Um, but I think it's more of just like a pull than a push and then a pull. <laughs> okay, okay. So you think he's thinking about like kind of pulling back the whole yeah, time as opposed yeah. to, yeah. So one of the ways we like to break up the lift is we like to try to think about like pushing the floor away as we initiate the lift. And I think for the most part, he does a pretty good job of it. I think one of the biggest things I'm noticing is that as the bar comes up, he pushes his knees in underneath it um, and is, is kind of thinking about locking his hips before his knees. So if we watch this through, you can see he like slides his knees underneath and then really starts like reefing back on it. Uh, and then we end up with that, a little bit of an exaggeration in the shoulders. Um, so what I would probably coach you to do is number one, you might be kind of pushing your knees out too hard. Um, and and the, one of the reasons people give that knees out cue is to get what Danny was getting at there, which is just like a sort of lateral pressure of pushing the floor out. Um, I think it's definitely possible for us to be overdoing the knees out cue um, and that can be messing with your lockout, it can sometimes give you a little bit of extra feeling in the adductors, um, like kind of the inside of your groin area. Um, and I would definitely try to lock the knees a little bit before you pull the hips through. So we can see it again on this third rep, kind of as the bar comes just up past the knees. Right here. And really, it really on, goes forward on Yeah, on that third it. one, I'd re I feel like I would try and focus on getting the hips back a little mm -hmm. bit more. Totally. I was going to say that same thing on this one here. You can see everything kind of drifts forward. It, like the pelvis forward. Yeah. Yeah. So try to like, try to just keep everything back a little bit, right? Yeah. Because you can, you can see he just like drifts out this way into it instead of staying locked into position. And then the last thing is maybe that the lockout is too far forward, right? Which kind of goes hand in hand with all that other stuff. But if you're locking out out here, you're kind of like bringing yourself to the bar, I like to say, instead of bringing the bar into you at lockout, which is usually how I try to cue people. All right, next we have David. David is doing some squats here. So he says he feels a little bit asymmetrical. Uh, he says he feels his legs um, sort of working a little bit differently from side to side. He also says that when he starts to uh, fatigue, he ends up kind of leaning uh, and, and shifting a little bit to one side. So we're gonna ask that whoever's watching this right now, head on down into the comments section below. Give us your constructive feedback for our boy David here and help him squat a little bit more symmetrically. So thanks everybody for tuning in. Thanks again to Danny for coming out. Yeah, and thanks for having me. And being part of the Form Check Friday. And we'll see y'all in the next one.